Hi guys, meteorologist Alexandra Cranford here, coming to you from my house in self-quarantine. Um, is this one going to work? Can you guys hear me? I know we had some issues um, before about the sound not being on. Can you guys hear? Um, if you can, let me know. If you can't, let me know. Just uh, type a little comment and I'll be able to tell. I'm sorry that we're having these issues with um, the microphone right now. Can you guys hear? Yes? No? Can you hear me? Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry about the, uh, the mic issues that we had before. Hopefully you can hear me. If you can, we're talking about our weather lessons today. <gasps> yes? Okay, good. Can you guys hear? Is everything good now? Again, apologize for that. I think I had a low connection, so it uh, dropped out the sound or something. Yeah, all right. We're getting some sound in. So coming to you live from my house today in South Quarantine um, at 1.30 as opposed to 1 p.m., but I guess we'll just do it this way for today. And again, what we're talking about today, oh, I'm so happy to see this. Audio is working. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, great. I'm so happy. Um, today what we're talking about is something that I am really excited to talk about, and hopefully you are too. Um, we're talking about fireballs. So this is kind of on the fringes of meteorology versus astronomy, um, but it does have to do with our atmosphere a little bit. Great, thank you guys so much for these comments that yes, you can hear me. They're popping up for me now and I'm so happy. Um, what we're talking about is fireballs, which is essentially a special kind of meteor, a super, super bright meteor. So for all of my adult friends joining me, hey guys, we're gonna talk about this thing called fireballs, which we occasionally mention when we talk on TV in our weathercast about meteor showers and we'll say, oh, this particular shower might even um, produce some fireballs and you might be like, whoa, what's that? And if you're a student friend joining me, um, because of course these are geared especially towards students who are off from school and stuck at home, then you um, may not have heard of a fireball and you may not even have heard of a meteor. So we're going to just talk about kind of the basics of that and we'll do a kind of quick one today. So. Whew, so happy the sound is back on and we're gonna get into it. This is what I wanted to show you guys first. Can you see this? Kind of weird to hold up my laptop here, but this would be um, the idea of a meteor, also known as a shooting star. So for my student friends, if you've ever seen a shooting star, maybe even just in a movie or a TV show, this is um, what we're talking about. A meteor is another name for it. And then of course we also have what would be a really bright meteor, also known as a fireball. And from the adults, I'm getting some comments popping up about other kinds of fireballs, but today we're talking about the um, <laughs> atmospheric kind. So when we get into meteors and so forth, um, what we talk about is um, basically a meteor is the flash of light that you see across the sky in the night sky for students who may not, not know. And this happens when there's a little bit of material, a little bit of matter that moves into our atmosphere and it moves so fast. It is going at crazy speeds. Um, and so it encounters a lot of friction and it burns up. And so when we see the light from that burning, that is what is a meteor. Interestingly, the little particle of either asteroid or comets that enters the is not the meteor. The meteor is the actual light. The little particle is something called a meteoroid. And that again is either a bit of a comet or a bit of an asteroid. And to show you guys a little bit about that really quickly, let me show you what those two are. A comet, and thank you to the um, American Meteor Society for this cool poster that I'm showing you. A comet would be um, this, kind of a solid body, and it's a little bit like fluffier, and most meteors are produced by bits of comets. Um, and so this would be one of the things that can break apart into little bits of debris, and those little bits are what enter our atmosphere and burn up. Um, there is something else though, and actually fireballs, the really, really bright meteors, are usually coming from this instead, which would be an asteroid. Um, and so those are less common. About 95% of the meteors we see um, typically come from comets. So almost a uh, most of them are from comets. And a little rarer is to have a meteor produced by an asteroid. 
and the asteroids are more associated with fireballs or fireballs are more associated with asteroids. Um, and so those are a little bit rockier. Sometimes they contain bits of metal um, and uh, like iron or, or ice even. And so those are the kinds of bits entering our atmosphere that would produce the fireball. So the fireball, um, if you're wondering what, what qualifies a meteor as a fireball, a fireball would be something that is about as bright or brighter than Venus. And so for especially my students who are watching, um, when you look out at night in the evening sky and it's just starting to get dark and you may see the first or second star that you see and if one is looking really big, um, that is often Venus that you're seeing and it is actually a planet. It's the planet Venus and it shows up very bright. Um, so when you see a really, really bright meteor that kind of very technically uh, measuring the amount of light and so forth, um, that would be a fireball. So again, the meteor is the bright streak of light. The actual little bit of matter is the meteoroid. And of course, if it came all the way to Earth, which is not uh, common, it would be a meteorite if it made it all the way in. By the way, these little pieces, if you've ever wondered how much uh, or how big they are, uh, these little, little bits that we're talking about can be really tiny, like the size of a tiny pebble or even as small as a grain of sand. So to me, that's really cool to think about something so tiny creating such a brilliant flash that we can all see across uh, the night sky at times. So we've talked about meteors, meteoroids, meteorites, all of those very slightly different. Um, we talked about fireballs being more associated with asteroids than with comets, and that is rare. Um, something that you may not know about fireballs, and by the way, I've never seen a fireball, I don't think myself, although I have seen some beautiful shooting stars. But with fireballs, the different, um, they're so bright that sometimes you can see different colors associated with them. So interestingly, kind of like we were talking about um, with different, um, what was our topic yesterday that we were talking about with different clouds, how sometimes you can see different colors associated with different particles in the atmosphere. That's true of fireballs as well, um, in that if you have sodium burning up, it produces a little bit of a yellow glow. And if you have magnesium showing up, for example, that would produce a bit of a blue glow. So uh, kind of interesting about that when fireballs are so bright that you not only just see the white that we would see like a light uh, with a shooting star or a regular meteor, but you can also see um, those kind of subtle colors with fireballs. So how often do these fireballs happen? The American Meteor Society estimates that thousands may happen every day, thousands. But the thing is, um, <laughs> Thousands of meteors, I should say, happen every day. The thing is, though, a lot of them are happening during daylight, when, of course, you know, we can't see. And uh, it would be in the night sky, of course, that we're able to see the meteors. And also, they may happen over unpopulated areas. You know, there's no one out over the middle of the ocean to record these kind of things in, in really remote spots. So when we talk about all of this, um, this is all kind of depending on where we are and what we can see as, you know, just people living on the surface of the earth in certain spots. So one thing about meteor showers that a lot of people talk to me about, and by the way, a meteor shower would be a, a predicted time that often happens once a year. It's very, um, you know, regular pattern when the earth orbits the sun and we know that it's going to be going through a spot with a lot of debris, usually from a comet or from an asteroid. So a meteor shower would be when that time of year comes that the earth is going through this area that's kind of littered with some of this debris from a comet or something. And we know that we could probably see these tiny little specks burning up in our atmosphere. There's a higher chance of seeing that. So um, those would be the meteor showers that we talk about. And sometimes we talk in our weather casts about it and we'll say, oh, if you go out at dawn or if you go out just before dawn, you can see these things. So when we talk about meteor showers, um, it is kind of hard to see, and especially if you live in the city. So if you live in New Orleans or in a bigger city, these can be difficult to see. And sometimes people do say, oh, I went out and looked and didn't really see much. Um, that does happen. 
However, you know, sometimes if you can get away from the city lights to a dark um, place, place without so many lights, where um, especially if it happens to coincide with a new moon when there's not a lot of moonlight too, you can see all of these kind of things a little more clearly. But yeah, it is harder for sure in the city of New Orleans or in a city. Um, so just remember that. Okay, so as for fireballs, if you're wondering how common those are, if you know that we have a meteor shower and you go out and you put in maybe an hour or two in really dark skies, you might be able to see possibly, you know, as many as one or two or a handful, sometimes even up to a dozen, and that would be with a short period of time. That would be for a regular meteor during, you know, we'll say just kind of an average meteor shower. If you wanna see a fireball, a super bright meteor, those are less common. And so for that one, you might put in 20 hours of viewing and maybe only see one. So when we talk about fireballs, it's really fun to talk about, uh, but it is uh, not the most common thing. And again, I've never seen it. I would love to. Hopefully I can see it one day, but I have not seen it yet. If you've seen a fireball though, I'd love to hear about it. You can put it in the comments. Um, and of course, these things are extremely difficult to get nice photos of, so um, that would be really hard, although, you know, it can be done, I guess. Um, so when a meteor shower is coming up, we do have a better idea, of course, that there will be more meteors at this particular time. But showers not only are hard to see in the city, but they're also unpredictable. It's hard to tell exactly, um, you know, which year will produce a ton of meteors um, and which one, uh, you know, may not produce many at all. Even um, there's some, some showers that are a little more predictable, but in general, it's kind of hard to predict. I wanted to let you guys know that the next meteor shower is the Lyrids, and that is in late April. So it's coming up not too far from now. And actually in this um, weird time where we're not you know, allowed to uh, go out in certain locations at certain times and so forth, um, a meteor shower may not be a bad idea to kind of put on the calendar for late April um, in, to go out and try to see it. Um, so it peaks April 21st, and this meteor shower does correspond with a new moon, meaning that uh, it's that uh, phase of the moon where there's no moonlight shining. So um, as opposed to a full moon, if you try to see it during that time when the, when the moon is full, it can be really hard to see. Um, this next meteor shower, by the way, the Lyrids, is known for um, for sometimes producing fireballs, which again, I would love to see, have not seen though. So um, that is something to look forward to. And then there's another one that peaks in early May. So we have two coming up this summer. Um, and so uh, really in the next couple of months, um, that's the Ada Aquarids and that peaks on May 4th. But by that point, we are going to have a full moon. So it will be harder to see. Um, by the way, um, as we talked about, just to kind of review, especially for our students, uh, we did talk about meteors, meteoroids, meteorites. We talked about how different kinds of chemicals burning up as those come into the atmosphere can produce different colors. Um, we talked about fireballs, how bright they are compared to the planet Venus and compared to other meteors, um, and talked a little bit about trying to view um, meteors and fireballs. So this one's a little shorter, and again, I apologize for if you were tuning in with me at one o'clock. We did, we did have some technical difficulties. I did not get any, um, I didn't have sound with those. So again, we did it at 1.30 today, but we will be doing these as we head into next week as well. So keep joining me for these weather lessons. This one kind of short, um, and again, kind of on the fringes of meteorology, more so maybe ast astronomy. Uh, but in any case, we will continue talking about these different weather topics. And it's just going to be, um, I think, a lot of fun. I've been trying to pick really um, interesting topics to me, and I hope you think that they're interesting too. So we will well, continue this next week, 1 p.m. on Facebook Live at WWL uh, space, Facebook page where you are right now, and we'll keep doing these into next week. And again, not only for my adult um, friends, but also for especially students who need a little something to do. So coming to you um, live on Facebook from my home uh, in New Orleans, as I am still on self-quarantine and many of you stuck at home for different reasons as well. Um, I will say good afternoon to you guys. I hope you have a good rest of your Saturday. And again, see you soon at 1 p.m. here on our Facebook Live. Take care.